To begin, this is a story of convergences, connections, and collaborations. Connections to the land, environment, and nature, encouraging a sense of responsibility and respect for this ecosystem in an urban setting. It's a story of community in the garden, coming together as caretakers of flora and fauna, and connecting to the cyclical activity that supports this life. To community in the studio, collaborating in the physical processes of making. This is a story of movement through seasons and a city. This collaboration, this merging, and this movement created a train. Over a year ago, SNAP, together with the Edmonton Arts Council, released a call for proposals for temporary public art commissions that were to be called the super trains. Artists and designers were invited to submit proposals to create imagery for the interior and the exterior of LRT trains that would run on the tracks for approximately nine months. The project also included a two-month residency at the SNAP studios. The artists were asked to speak to the theme of environmental stewardship in an urban setting. And I immediately, when I read that, knew that I wanted to create a project celebrating the Edmonton Community Garden and explore the ways that community gardens connect us to the land and to each other. What was also clear to me at that moment was the project required collaborators. To truly speak about community, you needed to assemble one. Kyla was the perfect <laughs> invitee. She and I are both print artists. Uh, we both were very familiar with Snap and the studios. Both are lifelong gardeners, mm -hmm. or almost lifelong, mm -hmm. uh, who happen to be neighbors in the Strathcona Rail Community Garden. And she didn't hesitate when I asked her. Mm -hmm. In the garden, the sun, water, and soil working together are necessary for the growth of the seeds that we plant. It's a dance between us gardeners and the elements as we purposefully tend our plots to help our plants thrive. This collaboration with nature is innately creative, with planning and problem solving playing a big part. On one hand, nature gives all that is needed. For example, different plants uh, support each other by providing shade and nutrients to other plants. On the other hand, Nature can present a multitude of conditions that require just as many responses. Too dry, too wet, too cold, too hot, too late, too soon, too windy, <laughs> poor soil. There's infestations of worms or bugs or beetles. And then there's always the opportunists like birds, voles or hares that nibble on our precious crops. So this list can go on and on. And so we strategize, we prepare, and then we jump in with a trowel and a watering can, and we put our creative thinking caps on. I've been gardening for about 15 years, and Helen practically her whole life, but that doesn't mean that we're experts. The nature of a community garden often presents collaboration with fellow gardeners. We work together on projects, and on committees that benefit all the members, such as transplanting raspberries or turning the compost pile. We garden side by side, encouraging and supporting each other, exchanging seeds and plants and advice. And so we develop friendships. Even before we entered the studio, the experience of tending our gardens contributed to our creative process. And it gave specific direction for the Super Train project. Throughout the season, we observed the stages of growth, the changes of size, color, and shapes of the plants. And we watched other critters like hares or butterflies or bees claim their place in the ecosystem. 
We smell the earthiness of the soil as we turn and dig in the dirt. And we cultivate a sense of belonging to nature by spending time within it. These experiences and observations gave to us our initial vision of what we wanted to create. That is, we wanted to bring the experience of the garden to the riders of the train. Not surprisingly, Kyla and I saw many correlations between the creative processes of gardening and art making throughout this project. The ability to go from garden to studio was so inspiring. In addition, we determined for the train's imagery that it was important to document, as Kyla said, the gardener's activities throughout the year, tending, harvesting, and collecting seeds. Our artistic process often started with bringing harvests into our studios to photograph them, photograph them much like portraits. We also went directly into the garden, documenting the growth habits of the plants. From these, we would then create full-scale drawings in multiple transparent layers that became the building blocks for the prints. A crucial part of the project was the residency at the SNAP Studios and print shop, where we printed all of our images. And we brought a few of them today, and they will be in the room at the back uh, to look at after the talk. We ultimately chose to use the technique of screen printing because it gave us the ability to use color in the work. A lot of our other color, our level of our prints are out of the black and white theme. So uh, screen printing really gave us that ability to bring, which we call brilliant color, but nobody else would call brilliant color. Yeah. <laughs> it's all degrees. For those of you that know screen printing, um, it uses many layers uh, to build a print, each layer exposed onto a screen. And I think as we've got the pictures scrolling up through here, there are some pictures, of course, of the train, some that are in the studio, and some that are from the garden, too. So there was one element, um, one picture there where um, you see all the screens lined up. By the end of the project, we had used 19 screens, <laughs> which uh, we thought was quite a feat. Mm -hmm. And it's good that SNAP actually had that many. So, um, we also want to take this moment, I hope she doesn't get embarrassed, <laughs> to recognize Nola Cassidy McCourt. Uh, she is sitting at near the back. Uh, she assisted us. She stepped in to assist us with the printing at SNAP during the residency because Carla broke her arm mm -hmm. halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> So, but we managed to, uh, we only managed to be, what, two weeks uh, later than the actual deadline because of it. So I think we, we did rather well, mm -hmm. but we are grateful to uh, Nola. She had great energy and wonderful expertise to, it, to add to the printing, which got us through. Mm -hmm. so, thanks for that. Um, and I just want, on that, I want to say that collaboration in the studio is such a wonderful thing. Um, I hadn't done a lot of it myself prior to this project, and I'm going to seek it out more and more because it was really mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. they are, our individual creative processes merged to create something new. Uh, day to day, we had creative decisions, and they were defined and honed by the directions for the work that we each brought to it, or the direction, the directions that we brought to it for mm -hmm. the work. Um, in addition to screen printing, some images such as the native pollinators and fauna, Kyla printed in relief lino cut. And the distinctive mark making of that medium really contributed to a graphic energy that contrasted beautifully with the hand-drawn flora, very colorful hand-drawn mm -hmm. flora. And especially in the wallpaper that we created for the exterior of the train. Xanotype was another utilized process. Again, Kyla placed seed pods on gathered, uh, she, seed pods that she gathered from the garden onto treated paper and let the light document their shapes. We played further in the studio even after these layers were printed. For example, by placing actual nasturtium flowers or seed pods on top of the screen printed or cyanotype. Um, images and then photographed them together and that was what was the final image on the train. Once the prints were finished, there was another, yet another required transformation um, with that used the, um, sorry, another required transformation from paper 
to the walls of the train. To achieve this, collaborations were required with the expertise of the SNAP staff to create the, at times, complex compositions for what we were calling the wallpaper inside and outside the train. Finally, digital files were forwarded to Patterson Outdoor Advertising for Fabrication into Vinyl. When we discussed this talk with Anya, the idea of art appearing as movement felt immediately relevant to me as I saw in many ways how movement presents itself within our super train project. Movement can be a progression of an idea. And this is seen in the linear development of our artwork. We can draw a direct line from experiences in the garden to inspired ideas, to the creation of tactile printed images. Every step forward brought with it change and transformation. The last step brought our images into the digital world, editing and sizing imagery to specifications so that it could finally exist in its current state as it appears on the train itself. Planting, planning, tending, and harvesting the garden over many months establishes a strong connection to the movement of time. Helen and I wanted to show this on the super train, and so we developed imagery that references the different stages of the garden. The early growth of seedlings, the maturing plants of midsummer, the abundance of harvest in the fall, and the eventual decay of winter. In this way, we embedded the movement of time within the imagery itself. Movement is a change of location. Movement is travel. The Super Train project allowed us to change the location of our garden to one that moves throughout the city in different directions at any given time of day. Anyone can get on and off the train and have their own garden experience, allowing them to connect to nature within the city as we do. Originally, the word confluence was coined to describe the coming together of two rivers that merged to create a large flood of water. Now, of course, it can be defined as a coming together of events, experiences or ideas from which something important can arise. In our case, a confluence of nature, creativity and community merged to help us create a super train. That's it. <laughs>